Now let's start with the demonstration of Swagger UI. This part of the demonstration will show how to perform first steps with REST API, Swagger UI and help of curl command. Curl is an open source tool available for Windows and Linux. Even Linux shell is used to show the demonstration, it can be easily adopted when using a Windows desktop. As mentioned before, Swagger UI is a good starting point to learn more about the PowerStore REST API. We can access Swagger UI with any supported browser using the management URL and append slash Swagger UI. For instance, https colon double slash IP address of the PowerStore system slash Swagger UI. Here we can see the PowerStore Manager dashboard overview. To access Swagger UI, I copy the main part of the dashboard URL. Open a new tab. Paste the URL and append slash Swagger UI. Once Swagger UI is loaded, we can see a list of resources which are available to manage. As first example, we would like to check the host resource group. For that, we are using the filter to see only resources related to the host. Now we can see all possible actions for the host resource group. The boxes on the left hand side show the possible actions followed by the resource group in a short description. To get a list of all host resources, we are using the collection query. As it is a get operation, there are no parameters to define. But we can expect responses with host instances and a HTTP return code. We can expand the host instances with a small triangle to get a list of all possible attributes. Attributes may have also some folded information, like possible operating system for attribute OS type. When we are scrolling up to the beginning of the section, we can find the button labeled with Try it out. This button enables us to execute an action against the PowerStore system. A click on Try it out enables the button Execute. Once we click it, the system performs the action in the background and shows some responses. The top black box shows the curl command. The lower response only shows the request URL. After scrolling down, we can find the response body and response headers. On the bottom of the screen, we can see the HTTP response code. This is 200 and means success. To reduce the load for the UI, PowerStore system only shows the ID of each resource. For more details, we can use the curl example, which is available on the top of the section. We can copy the curl example and paste it into a shell. The example don't show SSL and authentication settings. To set, we need to specify dash K to ignore SSL warnings and dash U for basic authentication. Like in Swagger UI, we can see the response with the ID of each individual host. For the following demonstration, I'm using the alias PST curl to utilize curl with following settings. Dash S to suppress download statistic information. Dash K to ignore SSL certificate checking. Dash U for HTTP basic authentication using admin account and password. Dash H to specify header for JSON data exchange format and Dell EMC token for change operations. Now let's use the PST curl alias with the previous URL and some specified attributes we have seen in the Swagger UI. For this purpose, we append following to our query. Question mark, select equal ID, comma, name, comma, OS type and execute. Now the output shows the attribute information in addition to the IDs for each individual host resource. To specify a single host for the next operation, we can append the ID to the base URL of the host resource. As we are interested in host initial settings instead of OS type, I am changing the selected attributes. The output is very compact, so I am using pipe JSON reformat to have a more pretty output. Now we can see the registered host name in PowerStore, the initiated port name, which is an IQN because of port type iSCSI, and two active sessions to the array with target IQN with associated appliance ID and used network port IDs. The shown JSON can be used as template to create new hosts. But first, have a look into Swag UI for set. Closing the get section and choose post to create a new host. Swag UI looks like similar to the previous section and shows the data model for host create. All required attributes to create a new host are marked with a red asterisk. Let's expand OS type and initiate a create modify with a small triangle to see valid settings because both are required. For OS type, we can choose Windows, Linux, ESXi, AX, HPUX, or Solaris. 
The initiate instance needs port name, which is the IQN or fiber channel WWN and port type. Below the port type setting, we can find required username and password attributes when chap authentication is used. On the top of the section, we can find again the try it out button, which enables an editor field in your browser. In the editor field, we can see a JSON skeleton with the attributes to create a new host. Shown attributes and values can be changed as long as it's valid JSON, required fields of the model are used, and settings are valid according to the resource data model. For the demonstration, I want to create the host Linux host REST API. Use description created using REST, even if it's not required. Voice type is Linux, and initiator I'm using is iSCSI. So I need to adjust port name to the host IQN and port type to iSCSI. As chap is not used, we can delete these attributes including the last comma behind the port type to have a valid JSON object. When all is set, we can scroll down to the execute button and response section. Once we click the button, Powerstore Manager executes the configuration in the background and Swag UI shows a curl example, request URL and response of the array. Status code 201 indicates create success and response body shows the ID of the created host. We can copy the new ID and use it with one of the last curl examples to check how the host is created on the PowerStore cluster. Again, I'm using the alias PST curl with options dash x get and base URL for the host resources and append the new host ID. To make the output more readable, I'm reducing the attributes to ID name, OS type, description, and host initiators. Unformatted JSON is quite unreadable, so I am use pipe JSON reformat to make the output more readable. Shown host looks very similar to what we have used to create. Now let's check the volume resource and possible attributes. Heading back to the Swaggy UI, scrolling up to the filter and use volume. Beside resources where volume is part of the name, we can find the volume section a bit like for host resource, we can find also a section for a collection query. When clicking here, we can see available attributes we can expect for volume instance. Examples are name for the volume, type, which indicates if it's primary volume or clone or snapshot, the state of the volume, and more below, the size of the volume in bytes as well as protection and performance attributes for the volume. On the very end of the data model, beside other attributes, we can find attributes for migration, node affinity and the appliance which serves the volume. As we can adopt the curl syntax from our host example, we jump direct to the CLI for a collection query providing ID, name and type attributes. As there are a lot of volumes, we can use the server-based filtering to limit the number of results. Let's say we are only interested in primary volumes which can be used for host access. For set, we append type equals eq dot primary to the request URL. It's still a screen of volumes. Let's add size attribute to the output and use OS sort function to sort the output. There are a bunch of web walls with a size of 20 GB. Let's use set number to filter for volumes larger than 20 GB. To our last comment, we want to append the filter size equal gt for greater than dot the value for 20 GB. Looks good. But now only volumes with string def are interested. To limit for def volumes, we can add the filter name equal i like for case insensitive like query def to our query and get primary volumes with a size of greater than 20 GB starting with def and the name. Now we know almost everything to query a PowerStore cluster. Let's use the host we have created using Swagger UI and attach a volume protected with scheduled snapshots. First check available snapshot rules using the last base URL for REST API and replace volume by snapshot rule. Possible attributes to select are ID, name, interval, desired retention, and policies. We have got one entry as result, which shows a snapshot schedule every 4 hours, a retention of 24 hours, and an associated policy ID. We use the policy ID for the next query against the resource group policy, with some selected attributes. As we can see in the result, there is just a single snapshot rule behind that policy. As I don't remember the host ID for our host created in Swag UI, let's perform a quick query for hosts with the name Linux Host REST API. 
For the blend post operation to create a new volume, we need to set the CSRF token which is used in a last PST curl. Using the last curl command with option dash I shows the CSRF token which can be used for the post operation. Even with sourcing line curl examples with JSON payload, we can store the JSON content also in a file. I have prepared already a JSON with information for a new 100GB volume REST API dash volume dash 001 and the previous protection policy ID. Just the host ID is missing, which I am using from previous command. When a JSON payload is used from a file, we can use option "-d at file name to read the file and the option "-x to send it to the REST API server. As a result, we get the ID for the new volume. Right now, multipass-l shows no volume, but after iSCSI discovery, we can see the volume with both paths. We can use curl to check the WWN and compare with the multipass output. Looks good. Post operations can also be used to perform actions against a resource. Volumes, for instance, supports creating a snapshot. The example here shows creating a snapshot with a comment. To change existing attributes, like volume size, we can leverage patch operation to override existing attributes with new values. The example overrides the previous 100 GB with a new value in byte for 200 GB. We can check the result with a quick get query. Better to read with JSON reformat. When host and volume reach the lifetime, this API can be used in the configuration. First, clear OS configuration with a small helper script and check that there is no volume configured and iSCSI session is removed. Once again, we need the host ID to perform the post action against our cluster to detach the volume. In the request, the host ID is specified in the request body. Next step is overwriting the protection policy ID for the volume with an empty string to remove the protection policy for the volume. Now we can use the delete operation to remove the volume and host against the URLs which includes the resource ID. This ends the REST API Swaggy UI demonstration part. The last part shows how REST API can be integrated into own Python scripts.